Hey guys, welcome back to Live with Mrs. B. Today we're doing a sit in video. If you have not guessed from the title, we are going to be talking about my upcoming surgery. If you have no idea, maybe you missed my Instagram post. I shared a post on the grid on Instagram. If you don't follow me, then you should. But I appreciate not everybody sees every picture or not everybody's even got Instagram. So today we are going to be talking about my upcoming surgery. If you do not know, five years almost to the day, it's actually kind of freaky. I broke my ankle, I fell walking down a hill. Everybody's always like, what did you do? Like, because I broke it so bad, everybody's like, what happened? Were you like doing something really cool? Were you rock climbing somewhere cool up in Scotland? Were you, what were you doing? I'm like, no, I was just walking down a hill and I just fell. So when I fell and snapped my leg, I snapped it really, really, really bad an ambulance was phoned literally my leg was like this um yeah it wasn't good like so that was like my ankle the bones also popped through the skin so it, it wasn't good it was a really bad break I was taken by the ambulance to hospital where I was in recess for a good couple of hours I was very distressed I am a terrible patient I was very distressed I was very disorientated, I was in a lot of pain, I had been given so much morphine that I actually then started to have a really bad reaction from it and I was sick. It wasn't good. So they x-rayed me when obviously I got to hospital and stuff and I actually had to be sedated. I was so like not a good patient. I feel bad now um, thinking about the way that I acted but obviously as I said I was just disorientated I was in a lot of pain I just I just wasn't with it you know I was kind of high on the morphine it wasn't good but yeah I had to be sedated in the end because I was just a bit ah. um yeah so I was I had x-rays done and they said you know look you broke it really really bad you're going to need an operation on it and that was it I was taken up to a ward that evening because I did it um and in, in the evening it was like seven o'clock when I broke it so I was taken up to a ward at about 11 o'clock and then the next morning I had my operation. I had to have a quick um get away there guys or guy will just come in. The kids were out playing on the trampoline he came in and he had somehow caught his fingernail and he's ripped half his fingernail off. So yes I've dealt with that. The kids are now inside so sorry if it's a bit noisy but let's get back to this. So when I had my operation they put in a plate which is about that size compared to the size of my face. <laughs> Uh, about that size along with eight screws and wire. I didn't even really know wire was a thing they put in your body. I've had pins put in my body before and my elbow if you can see here. I broke my elbow when I was a little kid. I was only five and snapped it real good. Um, apparently that's something I like to do. I snapped it good. They put pins in it and then they took them back out. I think because you're growing like so obviously I was five. I think they take the metal work back out. But anyway, I had this operation and it was absolutely <laughs> horrible like so so bad I hated it I'm very handsy today don't know what's going on um but I hated it it was so horrible the recovery was really bad when I came out of the operation you know and like they bring you around after your anesthetic I was in so much pain they were giving me like really strong painkillers and I had to wear an oxygen mask and stuff because the painkillers were so strong and then I was moaning because the oxygen mask was so big and obviously I didn't have my glasses on so the oxygen mask was like in here and it was touching my eyes and it was annoying me so I was like moaning because that was hurting me and then so they gave you you know like the tube and the little things go in your nose with oxygen they gave me that and then I didn't like that, obviously, because I was really annoying. Um, so then I was crying to get the oxygen mask back. It was not great recovery. Um, it was actually so bad they had to put a block in my leg to get rid of some of the pain. So if you've had a spinal block before or you've heard of a spinal block, it's like that. But they just put it like in the nerves where you're in pain. So it was just in my leg and oh man. It was, it was just so sore. I was on such strong painkillers. As I said, I had to have the oxygen for a couple of days whilst I had the painkillers, but I also, the painkillers were on a locked box by the side of my bed because that's how serious, I don't know, like 
I, I don't know why they were locked up but I've had medicine before um, that's been in a pump. I got this in a pump. It like goes into your cannula in your hand and you pump it every five minutes and it gives you a dose of the medicine. I've had medicine before like that but it wasn't the same medicine. It was just, I think it was morphine or dimorphine after I had Sky because I was really not well after I had Sky. Um, but that wasn't in a locked box by the side of my bed. That was just like by my bed so this stuff was locked up and I got out of hospital pretty early um all because of Thomas really in our old house Thomas took one of our couches and moved it upstairs into Skye's room and then took Skye's single bed and put it downstairs in the living room for me and if you guys remember in our old house or you might never have not been in our old house, nobody's been in our old house, but you might not have watched vlogs from our old house. Um, we had a full bathroom upstairs and downstairs. It was a really great house. It was just a bit small for us. Um, so because I could sleep downstairs and I had a full bathroom downstairs, I didn't need to go up any stairs at all. So they let me home kind of early, which I was so grateful for. And when I got home, I literally was for like a week. I just slept for a week. Every time Thomas would give me my medication, it was so strong, it put me to sleep. So every time he would give me it, he would give me the medication and he would say, night, night, which is kind of creepy, <laughs> like it was kind of weird. Um, but yeah, I just slept for a week and tried to heal and just, that, that was really it. I wasn't allowed to bear any weight on my legs, so that meant I wasn't allowed to walk on it. I was on crutches but to be honest I didn't really walk I like walked to the bathroom walked back from the bathroom walked to the shower walked back from the shower well hobbled um yeah that was it I was like that for eight weeks so pretty much two months I wasn't allowed to walk in it at all I then went back got x-rays done and stuff and I had healed up pretty well so didn't need another cast and that was me they were like oh you can just walk on it now but it actually didn't work out like that I still had to kind of keep the weight off it for a while. I then was on crutches for another four weeks, I want to say, four to six weeks, um, because then eventually I kind of went down to one crutch and stuff, so that was, it was funny. I just looked weird with one crutch, and I was in physio once or twice a week for a year, no joke, for a year. So since then, I've had a lot of problems with the leg, the ankle, whatever you want to call it, the hardware. I've not had a great range of movement. Uh, I've not been able to run on it. I can't jump on it. It's just not great. It still swells up for, once I got it done, after about 18 months, every day my ankle would swell up, literally like this. And every day I would finish the day with my leg like that on the couch, like along one side of the couch, lying down on the couch to elevate my leg and try and get some of the swelling away. I'd wake up in the morning and it would be like all the swelling would be gone and I'd walk on it again throughout the day. And it would just happen again and I went back to see the consultant who was like, that's just, that's just how it is. He says your body's just getting used to it all. So that was rubbish. But even now, five years later, to the day, like it was like five years ago, I had my operation like three days ago or something. So five years and three days, whatever it was. Um, yeah, even now I still get swelling. So it's not great. It can be pretty painful, um, which who who needs pain like that every day in their life? So I went and seen a doctor last month who is going to perform my surgery and he like examined me and stuff, heard about what was going on and he said, yeah, it needs to, all the hardware needs to come out. And then I had pre-op done with the nurse um, about two weeks ago, I think it was. And in that they just do like your height, your weight, your blood pressure. She didn't really know much about the actual surgery I was gonna have. She just kind of told me about the anesthetic and you know, like you have to fast before you went to hospital and things like that. And what medicine I need to take beforehand. And then we were, oh, I hear kids. <laughs> and then we were talking about um, blood clots. I've had two blood clots. So we're talking about what we're gonna do to prevent that happening again, which is pretty much just medicine. You get stabbed in the stomach every day after my surgery. <laughs> um, but yeah, and that's it. I'm booked in now for surgery. They're gonna remove Hopefully all of the hardware, it's not as easy as just we're going to take it all off. My hair is looking kind of funny today. It's not been washed today because um, we're going swimming so it always looks a bit funny on the second day. But yeah, so they're going to try and take as much of it out as they can. Unfortunately, or fortunately, I don't know, the skin can and does grow over all of the metal work. So, not the skin, not the skin, duh. Um, the bone, the bone grows over the metal work so I don't know if they like chip away at the bone to get to the metal work and then they've got to take the metal out 
I'm not sure how it works, but it said in my leaflet I got, it's on the bed, um, that actually some of the, sometimes can't take it all out. So I don't know how that works because you would have to take all of the screws out to take the plate out. So if you can't take like one screw out, then you're not going to be able to take the plate out. I don't know how it works, but hopefully it's going to be good. It is not going to be even like remotely similar pain wise i have been told we shall see how that goes it's just a day surgery so i go in in the morning and i come out at dinner time hopefully i don't need to stay in if i need to get like um that block again in my leg you have to stay in so hopefully i don't need anything like that and i can walk on it straight away my friend's friend had this done she had her hardware removed and she was back at work within two weeks so i'm hoping it's going to be a pretty easy pretty quick recovery as i said you can walk on it straight away so i'm hoping i'll just come home up my stairs into my bed if you don't know this house is the opposite way from most houses so upstairs is all of our living space like living room diner kitchen bathroom and also my bedroom and then downstairs the kids have their bedrooms and like a toilet kind of bathroom so once i'm up all the stairs at least I'm up, I can just kind of like walk between like the living room or the bedroom or whatever um, once I feel up to it. So yeah, I'm kind of nervous. If I'm honest with you, I'm really nervous. Um, I was worried that I am not going to wake up from the anaesthetic. Thomas is like, that's crazy. Of course you'll wake up from the anaesthetic. God has a plan for you. Nothing bad's going to happen to you. But I was like, well, if God's plan is that I go now, <laughs> you know, so I'm hoping, I'm praying that everything's going to go fine. I am nervous. I am a bit, a bit scared, but I'm going to do it anyway, because this life I've been living for the past five years is just really not a way to live. It's just not. So I'm looking forward to it. I'm excited. My surgery is booked within, I'm going in, in the next couple of weeks. We'll give you guys a date. But I'm, I'm excited. It's not going to be for a couple of weeks, but I'm nervous and excited and scared and pooing my pants all at the same time. So yeah, so I'm going to keep you guys updated, obviously, after I've got it done. Let you know how it goes. Let you know what my thoughts are on it, how I'm recovering. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure to give it a big thumbs up. I know it's a little bit strange, but I just wanted to kind of fill you guys in on what's going to be, what has been happening and what's going to happen in the next couple of weeks. And I will see you guys tomorrow for a foodie Friday. Bye guys.